So today I wanted to touch on a very common species found in the aquarium hobby, and that's also kind of finicky sometimes, but for the most part it's a very easy and beginner friendly plant, and that is actually Cripwenditti, and we're not actually going over just one, or just two, but all three colors that we have in stock typically. So in today's video, we're touching on Cripwenditti, green, brown, and red. So what's going on guys? Joseph from HJOPlants.com, and today we're going over Cripwenditti, and we have green, red, and brown. Now, Cripwenditti, it's probably one of the most easiest to find aquarium plants in the hobby. You'll find Cripwenditti pretty much in any fish store usually, even like the big box stores sometimes have it. And it's just a very common and easy to grow plant, but it does have its tropes, which we'll get into in a little bit. So there are many different variations of Quipwenditti, everything ranging from red and green on all colors in between. I have a particular type of Quipwenditti that is a neon green. It's actually called green gecko. I'm not gonna show that here today, but it's just a lighter green than the typical green that we have. It's a, it's just a brighter, lighter green. And there's also other types of Quipwendittis, just all different colors. So there's a huge color spectrum. These are the three that are most common though, so these you'll be able to readily find. And just so you guys know where these guys typically come from is they're normally found in Sri Lanka. That's where most crypts are kind of central to and, and native to is Sri Lanka. But there's other uh, areas of the world where crypts uh, pop up at, from time to time. So right here we have Crip Windy Green. You can see here some bright green foliage. Uh, like I was mentioning, the gecko green is actually much brighter than this. So that just, that just tells you kind of what it is. But you can see on this leaf there's some kind of brown around the edge, and that's actually natural. As the newer leaves pop out, they have a reddish brown uh, kind of veins almost going around the side as well. And it just, it's a cool little accent, but as the, they age, they'll get greener and greener. So don't worry about that. And as you can see, this pot's quite full. This is actually several plants. What happens with Crips is they are a rosette type plant, but they're also kind of like a rhizome plant, similar to Anubis. So they're like a mix between Anubis and sword plants because swords have a center mass. Anubis has like a one long stem that runs horizontal and so what Crips have is they have like this the, It's kind of like a rhizome underneath the ground and several different plants will pop up from there But also there usually is like one main plant. So what will happen sometimes? I mean this could be several different plants that were potted together or it could be just one plant that grew out and sent out a bunch of side shoots because even you see here on the side of the pot right here you could see a baby so they also produce the runner. So not only if you were to unpot this and break up the clump and take out pieces uh, of root, you'll be able to tell the difference. So you'll be able to see where all the leaves are coming out of center points and anywhere where, you know, they may be coming out of a different center point, you could usually break that up. Now, it also will produce the runner and the runner is kind of just like Bowles and, and Sagittarius where they produce like a runner underneath the gravel or substrate and eventually leaves will pop up with new plants. I've seen them shoot out runners up to like a foot away. So they're very prolific in that manner as they'll just kind of reproduce and you'll find one halfway across your tank sometime. So for the most part, Crip One Diddies are good at being mid-ground plants, but you could also use them as background plants in smaller aquariums. You could use them as foreground plants in kind of larger aquariums, which actually I really like the idea and the look of Crips as a foreground plant. If you have a large tank, I would say, Probably anything above a 55, maybe uh, maybe a 40 gallon, using crypts as almost like a carpet in the front. You get a lot of them, and they do grow rather slowly, but it can be done. Typically, most crypts will either lay over their leaves or they'll stick straight up. So if you take a look at the Crip One Diddy Red here. Now, it may look a little dark to you, but this is the red variation. It just kind of looks brown, but there there's differences between the brown. But you can see here that most of the leaves wanting to stick straight up and some of these leaves are kind of laying over sideways. So that's kind of a common thing with Crips is when they have low light, they actually want to kind of reach for it so they'll stand up. So these reds maybe haven't been getting enough light and so that's why their leaves are straight up in a way. And these leaves probably have been getting too much light and that's why they're laying over more because they just have an, a way more light than they need. Typically red plants need more red light and because Crip One Diddy Red is a red plant naturally. It's not through kind of nutrient content or anything like that. They're just commonly found as red. Now they do grow above the water as green leaves. As you can see, there's a green leaf here. But once they're submerged, they're red and that's just their natural chemical makeup. Some plants you can turn red through means of adjusting fertilizer, CO2, stuff like that, light levels. 
These just grow red, doesn't matter the lighting conditions or anything like that. Once they're submerged, they will be red. It's just how red will they be. Sometimes they'll get even brighter red or darker red depending on their condition. So now I did want to compare so you guys can kind of see. Let me take the tag out. This is Crip One Diddy Brown here. And this is Crip One Diddy Red. And you can kind of see the difference. The brown right now is still transitioning, so it's not its full transformed colors, um, but they're more of like an olive color than anything, uh, but they will get more brownish, but this is the red, even though it looks brown, um, underwater and in person, I don't know if maybe if you look at it from underneath, you could see the red maybe a bit better, but yeah, so... Even though it may look brown, it's actually the red. red uh, the brown variation is sometimes more of an olive color than anything. They just kind of went with brown to make it easy for people because calling it Crip Winditty Olive doesn't sound that great, I guess. And then I'll also show you guys the Crip Winditty Green compared to the Crip Winditty Brown so you can see the difference. So you can see the much brighter, lighter green and the more olivey, brownish color. There you go. <laughs> so they're a little bit different. They, they can be used together. You can definitely line them up side by side without a problem. Now, let's touch on when to use the red, when to use the green, and when to use the brown variations. Well, red plants, typically, you only want to think of them as splashes in the aquarium. When you're trying to aquascape, use red very sp sparingly, like one or two accent points, and the rest are greens and, and variations of greens. You don't typically want to do all red plants. Now, I will say I do have a 75 gallon down in the basement here that does have pretty much all red plants. There's like a couple patches of green, but it's mostly red. And I'm gonna be doing a better in-depth video of going over why you want more green than reds because it just really doesn't look natural in that aspect. But you could do an all red tank if you wanted to, that's no problem. Browns are also good as an accent piece. I wouldn't use them as a full kind of uh, carpet or anything like that. I had to hide them in areas and just be very particular about where you're placing them. The greens you could put wherever, obviously, but definitely keep that in mind. Splashes of red, splashes of brown. Unless you have a particular look you're going for, that's always fine, but you don't want to overdo it with the red. And so like one pot is what we sell here. And I mean, there's at least four plants in here, maybe five that you could plant and spread out. And that's what I would do immediately when you get those plants in. Take it out of the pot, spread it out, and let it kind of grow and do its thing. I would plant them a couple inches apart from each other. Now, crypts can be finicky, like I said. They have this tendency to have something called crypt melt, and that's why they get a bad rep. Because basically what crypt melt is, is when you take a crypt from even, say, downstairs in our basement with all of our grow tanks, if I was to take this plant and move it from one aquarium to the other, odds are it would lose the majority, if not all, of its leaves. It, it happens... It's just kind of the way the plants are. They don't like unstable environments. And that brings me to kind of what the parameters are. Now, if you have stable parameters, you'll see very little crypt melt, probably just in the beginning, and over its life cycle, you'll probably not see any. But if you have unstable parameters where, say, you do 80% water changes a week, or you constantly are messing around with different pH levels, GH levels, stuff like that, you may see the plant go through its stressful period, known as crypt melt, and kind of melt back a lot of its leaves. That doesn't mean the plant is dead. That underground rhizome that I was talking about that typically sprouts more plants earlier, that will typically survive under the substrate. And over the next couple of weeks after it has crypt melt, you'll see it start to bounce back and you'll see new leaves pop up. But crypt melt is a very kind of common thing to happen. You shouldn't be worried about it if you do see a little melt, especially when you first put them in your tank because that is completely normal. Uh, more so with crypts than any other plant. Most plants will have some sort of melt, but crypts will definitely usually melt. Very rarely do I see very little melt happen when we put newly introduced crypts into tanks. And that was kind of this leaf that I wanted to show. This is what happens. The leaf just melts down by the stem. Uh, typically, it's either from the stem up or it's from the leaf down. So... Uh, that's just, you know, how crypt melt goes. But overall, crypt winditty is a very easy to grow plant, low to medium to high light. And unless you have a, a rare variation that may require CO2, these shouldn't need CO2 at all. Their parameters, they can tolerate anywhere between six to eight, just keep it stable. Same thing with like the GH and KH can tolerate a mid range. Just don't have it fluctuate too much. And temperature can range anywhere between 68 and oh, even maybe lower. I might have had some in 65 degree temperatures. So you can range it anywhere between like 65 all the way up to just about 80. 
Sometimes above 80 they don't do well, so I would keep the temperature, try to be uh, at 80 or below, and they should do okay. That's really it for Crip Winditty, very easy to grow plant. I hope you learned something here today, and I hope you pick up some Crips. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any Crips in your tank, any Crip Winditties particularly, any reds, browns, greens, or maybe other colors out there. And if you don't, let me know if you uh, are thinking about getting some now, because they're really easy to grow plant. I definitely suggest them. They make perfect accent pieces for nearly every skate. But if this video helped you guys, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new here, click that subscribe button down below or the round button right there. But if you want to check out our last video that I touched on dwarf sedge, broadleaf sedge, and narrowleaf sedge, you can click over there. And if you want to check out our biggest tip for new aquarium people, you can click right there. And I will see you guys next time.